Okay, I hate to say it, but psychology has a lot of skeletons in the closet. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the ethical guidelines that should be observed when you're doing psychological research. Okay, let's start with the regulations set forth by the American Psychological Association. And there are four big ones that you need to know about. APA guideline number one is about informed consent. If you're gonna participate in research, then the people who are doing the research have to tell you exactly what it is that you're gonna go through. So let's say for the purpose of research, you wanna throw people in a fake jail and you know, put them through a traumatic experience. You're gonna to have to tell them exactly what they're getting into with that, and you're gonna need their informed consent. Now there are some situations where psychologists need to lie to the participants in order to study what it is they need to study. Um, in those situations, the study will be reviewed by an organization called the IRB beforehand, but we'll talk about them in a second. Okay, guideline number two is avoiding harm. If you're doing research, then you can't be out here hurting people or causing them psychological harm. For example, it would be wrong to trick people into thinking that they're I don't know, electrocuting someone else if they're participating in your study. Surely no one would wanna do research like that though, right? Okay, guideline number three is confidentiality. Basically, all research is gonna collect personal data from participants, and this information can't be shared with anyone. You gotta keep it safe. Guideline number four is debriefing. After an experiment or study has been completed, the researchers need to share the results with the participants. And if there was any deception involved, then they need to explain why they needed to use the deception in the first place. Okay, and this brings us to the IRB. IRB stands for Institutional Review Board. Universities will set up their own IRBs, and it's their job to screen research proposals to make sure that they're upholding ethical standards from the APA and the federal government. So if you're doing research at a university, you're gonna have to submit a proposal to them and get it approved. And their guidelines are pretty similar to the APAs. They're gonna look for things like informed consent, confidentiality of participant data, and what are the risks versus the benefits of the research, and whether or not it's okay to lie to participants. I actually had to lie to my participants when I was doing research in college because I was studying memory. And if you tell people that you're studying memory, guess what they try to do? They'll try to memorize everything. <laughs> They wanna look good, um, so you have to lie to them in situations like that. Okay, next organization is the IACUC, the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. The IACUC is basically responsible for ensuring that research involving animals is conducted in an ethical and humane way. So here are a couple regulations from the IACUC. Number one, the use of animals must be justified. You can't just use animals for research whenever you want. There has to be a clear benefit that outweighs any risk to the animals. And guideline number two is the minimization of stress or pain. And sadly, some animals are harmed in the name of science, but everything must be done to reduce the amount of suffering that they endure. Okay, the last organization that we're gonna talk about is the federal government. And one regulation that is set up by the federal government is the HIPAA privacy rule. Uh, HIPAA basically just ensures that no one can release your private health information without your written consent. Okay, last but not least are the FDA regulations. The Food and Drug Administration has strict guidelines on any research that involves drugs. And the effects of drugs is kind of a common area of research in psych. Okay, that's it for the ethical guidelines in psych, and it's also the end of our first unit. Uh, in our next video, we're gonna start the next unit looking at the biological basis of behavior.